Welcome to Traveling with the Chair and our live show today. Uh, we have with us uh, Chris Bond, who is partially sighted and his wife is blind. They travel, they cruise. So we're going to talk with Chris today and he's going to help uh, share his experiences and talk about how uh, they deal with the challenges they face. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Ken Edmonds and on this channel I provide information that helps people uh, travel better, uh, spend less, and enjoy their vacations in spite of the challenges they face. Uh, Chris, it's nice to have you with us. I really appreciate you making time. You're in England and we're able to coordinate a time. I really appreciate you making uh, time to be here today. Uh, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the challenges you and your wife deal with and then we'll go on to some other questions. Yeah, sure. So um, as you mentioned, myself, I'm partially sighted. Um, I've got albinism as well, which I've had since birth. Um, and my wife, as you mentioned, is blind and she's been blind for probably about the last um, 15 years. Um, during that time, she's also developed um, not full, but some hearing loss. So she has hearing aids as well. Um, yeah, as I say, we've been on obviously quite a few cruise ships. We most of the problems, to be honest, are sort of visual, trying to find things and obviously that's why it's finding your bearings and such, reading signs and such. But um, we, we seem to do quite well, I think. But um, yeah, obviously we'll, we'll go into more detail. <clears throat> okay. So well, let's, let's go ahead and since you mentioned cruise ships, let's go ahead and start by talking about cruises. Um, and so what are the... Uh, what are the good things about cruising for you and what are the challenges you face? Um, quite a few good things about cruising. I mean, it's we definitely find it's a very easy way to travel and see lots of different places at the same time. So obviously you can just get on the ship, unpack, and most days you end up somewhere new. Um, it's a very relaxed way in general, just because you can obviously enjoy yourself, go to different places around the ship. They're obviously fully catered with you know it's probably the wrong wording but um there's a lot of entertainment stuff on them so you can sort of do what you're happy to do um challenges i probably find cruising can sometimes be the easiest way and the way of traveling with the least amount of challenges compared to many other forms of travel um that help or not really? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's good. And, and I, I can see that because the, the one thing about it, if you're staying in a different hotel every night, then everything's in a different place. Whereas on the cruise ship for the week you're there, you know, the, the dining room's going to be in the same place today it was yesterday. The ship may be somewhere else, but if you're on the ship, you know, inside, you don't even really notice. So I would think that would make it, make it easy. Um, Definitely helps, well, yeah. <laughs> What are some of the things that the cruise lines do to help? Um, well, obviously, I meant, obviously mentioned two cruise lines. My wife's got disabilities. They obviously mention all the different things they can offer. Um, the most obvious, I suppose, are things like they can um, show dinner menus in Braille. Any um, or any documentation they have at all, they can obviously give to her in Braille if she feels she needs to use it. Um, myself, I'm partially sighted, so. Whilst the large print, like large print dinner menus and such, is available, I have normally been able to use sort of the normal version myself. I don't know if that's probably just pure coincidence or something, or maybe I'm sat in the right light or something. Um, um, we found the staff to be very helpful. I mean, I suppose people can sometimes tell by looking at you if you're a bit lost or disorientated. They normally ask if you know, where are you going and do you sort of know where you're going and, you know, how to get there. Um, they've always made a point when we do the uh, the mustard drill, sort of make sure it's, you know, we understand what's going on because obviously there's putting on a life jacket, it's obviously quite important, you need to know what to do. Um, and obviously getting to your mustard, mustard point in the first place. Um, obviously on the first day it's not rushed, but it's something you've got to know and you can't really be flustered obviously when it's necessary um yeah i mean if, if we've done 
when we do short excursions, we've usually booked in advance, not normally on the ship. Um, we've normally let them know if we have needed assistance, which fortunately has not been very often. But it's always there if if required. We've, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so let me let me ask you. I, I know you know, before we started, you and I talked for a minute. When um, what kind of shore excursions do you look for, uh, in particular for your wife? You know, because uh, some things are so visual. I don't know that. You know, I you know, I, I, I looks again. I, I I'm from a sighted perspective, so I, sure. I don't even necessarily understand what, what makes an attraction or a, an activity enjoyable for your wife. Um, it could depend obviously where we're going, but one of the favorite things we like to do, which is probably quite simple, is just going to somewhere like even a beach or a, um, like a beach club sort of thing. We've done that. Um, we've been to sort of like the Canary Islands and the Mediterranean. Um, and obviously given the nice weather, that's, you want to make the most of the weather. Um, a couple of things we've done, uh, for example, when we were in Lisbon, we went around the zoo. Um, which is obviously quite visual, but I've normally made a point of obviously explaining to my wife what the, you know what the animals are, what they're doing, because obviously they're not always very noisy. It's not always obvious. Um, yeah. What else have we done? Um, we went to we were in Madeira. We did um, like a whale and dolphin safari on. It's like a rib like a rib boat sort of thing. Um, so. Luckily, they sort of cut the engine every so often, so she can hear. Well, it wasn't specifically for her, but by chance they did, so she can hear like the dolphins clicking and the jump out of the water and such. Um, we've got a few other cruises booked, and some excursions we've looked at as potential things are um, like actually swimming with dolphins or sea lions, you know, just different animals in the sea. Um, there was one, um, we've looked at a couple of different ones in places like Roatan, Cozumel, um, obviously involving animals and such. Um, but also some just very relaxing, just being by the beach. I suppose you're on vacation and sometimes you just don't want to do a lot. Um, we found those sort of excursions quite, well, fairly obviously relaxing and quite easy to do because there's not really been many challenges. Okay. Now, um, I, I will tell you this, that if you do the swim with dolphins, when they tell you to hold on to the dolphin, you really, really want to hold on to the dolphin. <laughs> I can imagine. I did that. I did that and I got out there. I'm like, I don't want to grip him too hard or hurt too hard. I don't remember which. And so the dolphin took off and I was still right where I was because... I mean, it was like all of a sudden you were trying to hold on to the jet ski with your fingertips, you know, it's gone in your world. Okay, the next time I grab hold, uh, it's amazing how uh, powerful and how, and it's amazing how intelligent they are. I, uh, um, I'm, I'm a huge nature fan and, you know, like I said, we mentioned Rotan, if you get there, like I said, I love the monkey and sloth uh, exhibits, or the, uh, like I said, encounters would be a better description of them, but, um, yeah, I could see. The other thing, and, and, and again, that, that might be of interest is we did the um, uh, oh, swim with uh, or the um, feed the stingrays. Oh, yes. And, yeah, and, and you, you basically you can just stand there and hold food, and they'll, they'll swim up and feed out of your hand, and, and they'll, the guides will help them. You can hold your hands out, and they'll actually swim up and lay on your arms. and That was, uh, that was pretty cool, too. Oh. Again, it's, it's a it's a nice thing. Is it's a kind of a tactile adventure. You're you're standing in the water about like, well maybe chest deep, and uh, it's not like you're going to float off or anything. But they, <laughs> um, you know, the, the the stingrays there understand that you're their meal ticket, so they're very uh, very interested in you. Yes, maybe right. you're interested in them. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, and like I said, I, our experience. My wife tries to travel with a wheelchair. And we've had great experiences on the, on the cruise ships. We've never, well, let me phrase that with the staff. Mm. Passenger can be a challenge at times, especially with the elevators. Uh, you know, you're trying to get into an elevator and, you know, there's all these people that can walk and they just sit there and stare at you. And you're like, okay, watch your toes because we're coming in. Yeah, yeah. But, 
<laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. Um, so what about flying? What are the challenges you face flying and, and how do you deal with those? Um, probably the, one of the biggest issues, well, it's the issues, challenge is, um, to be honest, going through security at the airport. Um, because it's obviously having to walk through an arch, having to put stuff on the, in the buckets, they go through the security scanner, walking through the arch. Obviously, we can't do that together. And her um, white cane has to be scanned as well, so she can't take that through. Um, it, it sounds pretty crude, I suppose, but it's just lining my wife up. Um, my name's Kelly, by the way, just in case I didn't say that before. Um, yeah, it's just sort of lining her up in front of the arch and telling her to walk forward, which obviously when she can't see it is, well, that can't even, that must be quite a challenge in itself, even just to say simply just walk forward. Um, that's been the biggest challenge. I mean, I'll give you an example. The last last time we flew, it was out of Miami back to, back to London. They actually let us walk through the scanner at the same time, but then immediately pounced on us because they were convinced we were carrying drugs because I was holding a holding a hand, obviously leading her through. So that was a bit of um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> would man. Ever, you know, good people. We don't get involved in that sort of stuff, but it was quite daunting, sort of having then suddenly your hand swabbed and being told, "No, nope, can't go anywhere." Like. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am sure you're all, you, that that is. And one of the things that is available now in the U.S. that you might check with if, the next time you're flying through one of the U.S. airports is they have a program called, I think it's called TSA Assist or TSA Cares. But now, like uh, for my wife, uh, they'll actually send somebody to pick her up at the um, ticket counter. Yeah. And they put her all the way through, down, actually took her all the way down to the gate our last flight. Oh, and, okay. you know, and, and so they kind of act like a concierge to help with those challenges. Yeah. And so, that, you know, you might check and see if that's available with your airline. They would probably know, you know, when you check in, just because, like I said, that might. Um, the one thing I was thinking about is, is if a TSA agent is guiding your wife through the scanner, they're probably less likely to, to you know, want to stop and, and, you know, scan both of you, you know, and all of that. You probably have less challenges. That's it. I mean, lucky that's only been the one occasion. I did think it was a bit odd them letting us do that anyway. Um, we did that, like you just mentioned, the whole, um, like, concierge thing or someone guiding us through. We did that the first time we flew when it was just me and my wife. Um, we flew out of London going to Orlando. Um, and yeah, they, they helped guide us through the airport, made sure we were all right. I mean, there weren't really any, I wouldn't say really any challenges. We probably wouldn't be able to figure it out ourselves, but it's nice sometimes just to have that sort of extra layer of support, I guess, that at least you know next time it's like, okay, I either need it or I don't. Well, I would say the other thing that, that they have that it makes it pretty, pretty handy is they kind of have like a go to the head of the line pass too. So okay. you don't have to, you know, if there's 200 people in line, you know, to sit there and shuffle forward one step at a time. You know, they all, uh, with the TSA uh, uh, help, they basically can take you and expedite your process. So I would, you know, it's one of those things that I'm trying to share with everybody that hey, that's a, that's a, that's a possibility. Yeah, it's definitely something to consider. We've got um, quite a few plans in the future to do more crews get at different places, some out of the US. So it's definitely something to look into. <clears throat> Very cool. Um, so uh, where are you planning on going next, just on your on your next cruise, if, you know, assuming everything goes back to normal someday? That's it, yeah. Um, the next cruise we've got planned is in September this year, which, if I'm honest, I don't think will go ahead. I'm, I'm hopeful it will, but I've, I've got to be realistic a bit as well. Um, that's out of our home. That's out of Southampton. Um, that's going down to the Canary Islands again. Um, that's my thirtieth birthday, actually, by chance. Some um, more of a reason. I'm sort of hoping it goes ahead. Um, it's the same cruise line we've used before, Royal Caribbean, but it's a different, different ship and different class. It's the Anthem of the Seas, uh -huh. uh, which we've not been on a Quantum class ship. Yeah, I've obviously done a lot of research and you know things like deck layout, facility, all the different facilities they have, where they are, obviously 
mm-hmm. things like that. Um, I've always liked the sound of the Quantum class, and they announced, I think it was about a couple of years back, that obviously Anthem was coming to the UK. So it's like, right, getting straight on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's always okay. nice when you don't have to fly to go to a cruise. Um, how close to Southampton, Southampton are you? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, how close to Southampton do you live? We live just outside Southampton, funny enough. It's literally about five miles. So, oh, that's that- cheating. That's 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 not nice. No, everyone tells us that when we get on the ship. Obviously, <laughs> you make conversation they get on there from I don't know somewhere up north, you know, or Manchester or Scotland or something, and you tell them you're from Southampton, and then suddenly you're like, oh, don't like you anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but yeah. we're quite lucky in that sense. Um, yeah, I, uh, oh, and, and for us, because we we fly pretty much wherever we go, and our very first cruise, we had a plane issue, and we just barely made it, and I swore from that, that time forward, I would never, ever go to fly the day of uh, travel, so we always fly in the day before, and then you have to have a place to stay and transportation, and there's always some challenges associated with it, but I love not having the stress. And for us, I love, we get to the, we get on, I always show up at the, at the check-in as early as I think I can get by with it. Yes. Like get on the ship and eat lunch in the main dining room and, and just really start to enjoy my vacation early. And I look at these people that are running for the ship at 4.30 and I'm like, yeah, it's just a lot better to get here early. Oh, exactly. You've paid for your vacation. So it's sort of like you get a few more extra hours in a way for nothing. So Exactly. You know, and, and the, one of the things the cruise lines are really good about is for people with challenges, they usually, uh, you get priority boarding. So, you know, they, they board all the people in the luxury suites and then uh, it's your turn. That's it. That, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, you know, and while I'm not glad my wife's disabled, um, I, I take advantage of the benefits that come with that. Well, that's it. Yeah, you, you, you may as well. It's in a way sort of balances out, I guess. So. Yeah. Okay, well, Chris, listen, I really appreciate you being with us. And, and, and if you'll stay with me just a minute after I end, end the broadcast, we'll talk for just a minute more. But you've been a great guest. I, like I said, I, I appreciate you sharing the information and, and, and putting yourself out there for us. Um, for those that uh, are watching the channel, enjoy the video, do me a favor, uh, hit the like and the subscribe button. Um, that way I can, we'll know to continue to bring you content like this. And there'll be a, uh, in the end screen, there'll be a, a video that will take you to some more live interviews you might enjoy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.